We're good? Okay, thank you. I have a resolution from Councillor Morrow. Uh, be it resolved that we do now recess to the public hearing. Question's been called, all in favor? Thank you. Okay, now bylaw 6199, public hearing. I call, the order, I call to order the public hearing for bylaw 6199, land use amendment re 421 11th Street South. The procedure for this hearing will be, we will begin by calling upon Genesis Havia Oreo community planner to provide the background to the case. Those else who wish to speak on this bylaw will then be called upon. We will then ask three times if there's anybody else who wishes to make a presentation. City Council will then have the opportunity to ask questions of any of the presenters. The hearing will then be closed. Consideration of second and third reading will be made by City Council immediately following the public hearing. The applicant is present and will be making a verbal presentation. I now call upon Genesis Havia Oreo to provide the background to the case. Good afternoon, Your Worship and members of Council. Today I'm presenting Bylaw 6199, a proposed land use bill amendment for the property at 2111, 2111 Street South. My presentation includes applicant information, context maps, background information, evaluation and analysis of the proposal, notification information, a conclusion, and a development, uh, planning and development recommendation. The applicant is Doug McLaughlin on behalf of the owner, St. Augustine Anglican Church. The purpose of the bylaw is to allow a parking facility as well as to introduce a new set of regulations that will allow this property to accommodate a mixed-use building. And we are rezoning from RL and PB to direct control. The property is located in the south side of the city within the London Road neighborhood. Here is an aerial photograph of the property. And as you can see, it does have access to two rear lanes. Could I just ask you to refer to the page numbers so our counselors who are listening online can follow along with the presentation? Please. Yes, I can do that. Yeah. Moving on to page seven, we have an aerial photograph that is missing. Um, in your packages, there should be a site photograph from we go back to page seven. This should be from the front of the property. And uh, it demonstrates that there are three residential units. One is a single detached dwelling, then a duplex, and the south portion of the parcel is zoned um, RL, however, it's vacant. On page eight, it's a photograph from the south corner of the rear of the property, and this shows the vacant parcel and some undeveloped land to the rear of the residential units as well. And then slide nine shows the, and slide nine, we're back on track. Um, here we have the statutory plans that provide guidance for this rezoning proposal, and they include London Road Area Redevelopment Plan, the SSRP, and the ICSB MDP. The, Technical glitch? Yes. Okay, so back to the side photographs. Here is the rear of the property, and here you can see the undeveloped portion of the parcel. Um, and then in front, ahead of the undeveloped, is the rear of the residential properties. 
these statutory plans include the London Road Area Redevelopment Plan, the South Saskatchewan Regional Plan, and the Integrated Community Sustainability Plan, Municipal Development Plan. The uh, proposal is located within the London Road neighborhood, and uh, which is informed by the London Road Area Redevelopment Plan. The site was originally three parcels, which were brought together through a consolidation prior to the first reading submission. Um, the original three parcels were, are currently zoned PB and RL. One parcel included a single detached dwelling. The second parcel included two, a duplex, so two residential units, and the third parcel included uh, vacant land. So all of these three make up the, the site that we're rezoning today. And here are, here's the existing zoning. So as you can see, portion of the property closest to the parcel to the north is zoned PB and the remainder is zoned RL. And we are rezoning to direct control. And here, the next slide will be a side-by-side -side comparison. And moving on to page 15. For the evaluation analysis portion of this presentation, I will review the new uses and regulations that are proposed in this bylaw and the implications they have on existing development. A uh, bylaw 6199 introduces a mixed use building as a permitted use, and a mixed use building is considered a building with dwelling units on upper floors with commercial space on the ground floor. Bylaw 6199 would continue to allow the existing residential development um, to continue as discretionary uses with the owner until the owner is prepared to redevelop a mixed use building. In order to ensure the successful transition of this uh, property from low density to residential um, and mixed use development, we have a policy in place, a regulation in place within the bylaw that um, would prohibit the approval of res low density residential development permits upon the demolition of existing residential units and the development of a mixed use building. In addition to a mixed use building, a parking facility would also be permitted. This parking facility would be allowed up to 24 parking spaces. The parking facility would not interfere with the uh, parking required for the residential, residential uses, as it's stated in the bylaw that four of the 24 parking spaces are required for the residential uses on site. And um, in order to ensure compatibility with surrounding development, Regulation 18 and the site plan included in the bylaw outline the location and landscaping and screening requirements that the parking facility must provide. Moving on to slide 17, uh, this site plan is included to um, clarify and identify where the parking facility may be located, the traffic flow within the parking facility, and landscaping that, could, that sh shall be provided upon the development of the parking facility. This site plan does not apply to mixed use building, which means that the future mixed use building uh, does not need to be developed and provide parking in accordance with this site plan. And now moving on to uh, statutory plans that uh, provide guidance for this development. The first one is the London Road Area Redevelopment Plan. So this property is located within the mixed use precinct of the land use concept of the plan. Um, this is an area where mixed use buildings are supported. In terms of parking facility guidance, the London Road Area Redevelopment Plan prohibits the establishment of standalone parking facilities, and therefore Regulation 18E of, bylaw, of the Bylaw 6199 states that parking facilities shall only be permitted in conjunction with the previously approved use, and if the previously approved use ceases, the, par the parking facility shall cease to exist as well. In addition to that, the consolidation of this site was required in order to allow the location, a suitable location of the parking facility and space for the conjunct uses.
this uh, proposal is in line with the ICSP NDP in, in regards to diverse economy, a range of housing types, and efficient use of land. And it's also in line with SSRP policies in that it supports the efficient use of land and infrastructure. Six notification letters of this public hearing were sent out um, and newspaper advertisements were published on April 18 and April 11 of the Lethbridge Herald edition. And we also had consultation meetings with Leonard Grove Neighbor Association and um, multiple tea parties where everyone in attendance was in support of this proposal. The proposed amendment is in alignment with the existing planning documents um, at the neighborhood and city levels. And it is our recommendation that City Council approve bylaw 6199 and amend the land use bylaw to allow the reclassification of the cash and parcels to direct control. And that concludes my presentation. I'm available for any questions you may have. Thank you. As a reminder, presenters will have five minutes to speak to the issue. I now call upon the applicant, Mr. Doug McLaughlin, to come and speak to us on this proposal. Thank you. Thank you, Your Worship. Members of Council, uh, as a representative of St. Augustine's Anglican Church, appreciate the opportunity. Uh, our thinking, uh, first of all, in purchasing this piece of property, one of our concerns as being a church in the downtown area has always been that we would become landlocked and uh, with the properties being of the nature of the, that they are around us, we're concerned about what type of development could take place in the future. Uh, we've had talks within, uh, within the parish for quite a number of years uh, about how we could um, how we could ensure that as a, as a church in the downtown area, we could continue we could, and prosper uh, and further the, uh, the work that we do as a church uh, with our Anglican values and Christian values. And look, when this property came available um, approximately two, just over two years ago, uh, it came out of the blue. We had talked to the, the owner previously about purchasing it. Um, which and the property that came available was the duplex and the vacant lot. We already owned the single family unit directly adjacent to the south side of the church, or the south side of our church hall, I should say. When this came up, it came out of the blue. There was no contact to us. Um, a meeting was held at the church and the decision was made to make an offer and the, uh, the purchase was completed. We do not want to be in the long-term rental business. That's not what we do as a church. So uh, we have now struck a committee. Uh, I have the, um, I'll call it the honor of chairing the committee at the request of several members of the parish uh, to look at what we can do with this property and how we can develop it uh, and accomplish something that will be of value to the church and to the community. When we look at this, um, we have to change, or we're, we're requesting the change to the zoning so that uh, something more can be done with it. The residences are old uh, and they're not in the best of condition. We keep them up as best we can at present, um, but we're looking at a longer term type of, uh, type of use. We have had, as mentioned previously, we've had meetings or tea, the tea parties with the neighbors. Uh, we've talked to them, including um, the uh, church that's uh, behind us, the Lutheran Church. Uh, we've had several of the neighbors in uh, at, the, at these parties from the apartment block and the current residents of the rental properties. In addition, we have met with the London Road uh, Association uh, representatives and I have attended a London Road Association board meeting, explain what we're thinking of doing uh, over the next, I'll call it short to medium term. Uh, the short to medium term is to leave the residences in place, but uh, the vacant lot and the area in the rear of the duplex, we'd like to turn that into an actual parking area so that we can try and make a, uh, try and recoup some of the costs we have, specifically the, uh, the taxes in, in the short run, short to medium term, 
so we will not be, it will not be a hard top parking lot. We will designate the individual parking places. We're proposing that we will put landscaping across the front uh, area along 11th Street, which would be an area of uh, roughly eight meters by 15 meters. Um, we'll put in uh, a natural grass type of type of thing. We're not going to sod it. There will be shrubs that'll uh, go around the or go across the uh, the back part of the landscaped area to separate that from the from the parking area. Um, we'll put some shrubs along the front edge, right along the city sidewalk, so there's a bit more of a of a barrier created. Uh, we'll do that, and then hopefully we can make a deal with somebody to uh, to lease that out on a bulk basis. Uh, we think that we would have somewhere in the neighborhood of 18 to 20 parking places that uh, that we could rent out, hopefully on a bulk basis. Over the long term, we look at this uh, as an opportunity to do something with this land. The concept that we have looked at, but is not something that we have put in place or, or have not approved uh, within the parish yet, but strictly on a concept basis, is something that that would involve uh, a three-story building, potentially, with uh, th three, maybe four commercial spaces on the main floor that could be used for something like a daycare, maybe a medical office, a small pharmacy, something like that, that would fit in with the area. Uh, on the upper two floors would be approximately eight uh, individual apartments. They're not going to be large, but they would be aimed at either seniors or a combination of seniors and students. Something along the lines of something that we have found uh, in other communities called intention, an intentional community, where you get a mixture of these types of, of uh, residents, and they help each other. The students provide company for the seniors. The seniors tend to provide a little bit of guidance to the students from time to time. So we're looking at this. Uh, this is something that we would see take, not taking place probably for at least another two, maybe even three years. It's going to take us that long to uh, find some partners. We, are, we have had some in very rough initial discussions with other uh, churches in the downtown area, uh, downtown being a pretty broad context at present. Uh, and we would have to find a, a contractor that has a pretty, uh, uh, a pretty generous heart. So um, that's what we're looking at for the long term. We think it would fit in. We've had, as I mentioned earlier, the meetings with the London Road Association. They like the concept. We think that it fits with the, uh, the, idea, the ideas that the city has for the development of the downtown in terms of mixed use and stay and, and uh, additional uh, efficient use of the land for housing purposes. Any questions? Thank you. There may be questions from council. Yeah. Is there any member of the public that wishes to make a presentation on this matter? For a second time, is there any member of the public that wishes to make a presentation on this matter? For a third and final time, is there any member of the public that wishes to make a presentation on this matter? Hearing no other presenters, it is now time for City Council to ask questions of the presenters. I'll start with uh, Deputy Mayor Kaufman. Uh, thanks, Chris. I think that was on a previous issue and not on this one, not on the public hearing. Okay. Uh, Mr. McLaughlin, uh, this is a, a mixed use uh, request for a, mi a mixed use rezoning application, in essence, just to maintain a, a parking lot in the short term. Is that correct? And develop it as a parking lot. That's correct. With the with the existing zoning, we can't legally have a parking lot uh, on that vacant property, even though it's being used as such by other members, uh, people coming in and out of that area. But it's not under. Uh, it's not something that we're authorizing as a, as the owner. Okay, so people are basically using that space as a parking lot, and you're getting no revenue for it. Correct. Okay, and that'll this plan in the short term will fix that problem. Certainly hope so. 
Okay. All right, that's helpful. Any other uh, questions from Council? Councillor Morrow? On that, I'm just curious, do you know who's parking there? Yes. Hey. Um, they're clients of LSCO. Several of them have told, have told us that we should stay off their land. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions from Council? I see none. Hearing none, I now declare the public hearing closed. This matter may be decided later this afternoon following the public hearing. Now we'll go back to the regular council meeting. I have a resolution from Councillor Higgin. Yeah, be it resolved that we do now return, reconvene the to the regular meeting of city council. Do you want it this read after the technical switch? Okay, allow, just wait a few minutes for this, okay, thank you. <laughs> 